Good, a, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Edwin Walker, and I'm the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Aging at the Administration for Community Living. Today, we come together to celebrate a very impressive milestone, the 50th anniversary of the Older Americans Act Senior Nutrition Program. You know, in 1972, Congress authorized a permanent program from what had been, at first, a senior nutrition demonstration project. That permanent program was designed to support older Americans throughout the nation through the provision of nutrition services, and that program was the Older Americans Act Senior Nutrition Program. Today, 50 years later, the core purposes of the Senior Nutrition Program remain exactly the same to reduce food insecurity, hunger and malnutrition, to enhance socialization, and to promote the health and well being of older adults. The theme of our 50th anniversary celebration is celebrate, innovate, and educate. With this theme, we celebrate the many accomplishments of the national and local senior nutrition programs. We acknowledge the innovative approaches our network uses to support older adults, and we explore how education can help communities to better understand and to use nutrition services. And so we look forward to celebrating with you today, not only this program milestone, but the work that all of you do each and every day to support older adults in your communities. I also encourage you to, to engage with each other using the chat function during today's event. So you should feel free to start by adding something, something simple, like sharing where you're from. Now, to get us started, I'd like to introduce ACL's Acting Administrator and Assistant Secretary for Aging, Allison Barkoff to share a few words with us on this momentous occasion. Thank you, Edwin, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Whether you're someone who runs a nutrition program, works in a program full-time or volunteers, or if you are one of our truly honored guests, someone our program serves, thank you for being here. And thank you for participating in one of the thousands of nutrition programs spread across our communities. 50 years ago this month, our country took a major step forward in addressing the needs of older adults. Thanks to the work of advocates across the nation, the National Senior Nutrition Program was founded. Five decades from now, I have no doubt that we'll look back on this program with the same pride we feel today. The National Senior Nutrition Program is absolutely one of the flagship social programs in our country's history. Since 1972, the program has funded local agencies and organizations to help ensure older adults have opportunities to stay healthy, independent, and connected while they live the lives they want to live in their own homes and neighborhoods. Nutritious meals are vital to all of our lives, and they are, of course, the cornerstone of the program. But it's not only about the food because a meal is so much more when it leads to social connection. That's why I am so proud to work for an agency that values the connection between a meal and social contact. An agency that has worked hard, particularly under Carrie Lipperini's leadership to never lose sight of that connection. COVID has been devastating for so many of us and particularly hard on those the Senior Nutrition Program serves people who are over the age of 60 in the greatest need, including people who are low income, living in rural areas, or from underserved and underrepresented communities. When the pandemic first struck, there was great concern that we would lose our system of social connections tied to meals. The idea of combating social isolation through congregate meals was not just a good idea. It was based on empirical studies that showed people who engaged in the senior nutrition program were healthier and happier. And the programs run much deeper, providing nutrition screening, education, counseling, and an array of home and community-based services that support older adults' overall well-being. COVID threatened all this progress. But in communities in every state, and with incredible speed, we saw local organizations pivot. We saw the federal government grant flexibilities. 
and we saw grab-and-go meal events and partnerships with restaurants and distance doorstep food drops and virtual education. On each and every day, news outlets would tell the story of yet another senior nutrition program in some town or city that employed flexible and creative approaches to continue serving their communities. Their efforts helped Boy Boya Nation serving as a reminder of how our country pulls together in times of great challenge. Even with social distancing, people worked hard to stay connected to the people we serve. Standing on porches, they took the time to chat. Using the phone and the internet, they found ways to make sure older adults living alone had someone to talk to and knew someone cared. They did this even as the demand for programs skyrocketed during COVID and they found a way to meet that need. These programs are largely staffed by volunteers and many, many people generously donate their hard earned money to support local efforts. But the federal role is critical. And every year we have seen bipartisan support to make sure we fund our local providers. In a typical year, the National Senior Nutrition Program accounts for about 40% of ACL's budget. Now that's a strong federal commitment. And to meet the growing need during COVID, the American Rescue Plan added another $750 million in funding for meals for older adults. These funds allowed states to continue home delivered meal efforts for older adults and is allowing many sites to begin the process of safely reopening so that once again, a meal can be shared in the company of friends. Money spent on the National Senior Nutrition Program is money well spent. It's money spent on the health and happiness of our neighbors, those who truly helped build this country, who fought in our wars, who marched for civil rights, and who farmed or worked in our factories, and who now need a little support from a country that has their backs. In December, I personally saw the impact of the Senior Nutrition Program when I visited East of the River Friendship Cafe in Kenilworth in DC. While sharing a simple meal, we all shared something more, our stories, our smiles, and our desire to listen to each other. That day, a vaccination booster event was also on site, demonstrating the power of a meal to lead to other services and supports. And I felt so much pride in being part of that caring community. So it's with that sense of pride that I join all of you to celebrate 50 years of the amazingly successful National Senior Nutrition Program. If I had a glass of champagne, I'd hold it up and offer a toast for 50 more years. But for now, for now let me end where I started, expressing my thanks and gratitude to all of you. You are the National Senior Nutrition Program. So I'll close with two words, happy anniversary. Edwin, back to you. Thank you, Allison, and thank you so much for being here and for your kind words. I really echo your sentiments of admiration and pride in the astonishing everyday work of the senior nutrition programs. I'd, I'd actually like to take a moment to share my own thanks to all of you in the National Senior Nutrition Program Network. You see, I've been involved with the program for quite a while, um, actually 38 years. And I've seen success after success and community after community impacted positively. I've worked with many people and built many lifelong friendships and partnerships over that period of time. And in fact, I remember when I had my first nutrition site visit and when I delivered my first home delivered meal, I was so taken with the dedicated staff and volunteers who were true loving servants just to those people who were in need. And similarly, I was heartened to witness the, the deep appreciation and gratitude of the meal participants for both the social connections that were made as well as for the meals that were provided. And, and that's when I knew I was in the right business, one with a real mission that made a real difference in people's lives. I am so very proud of this program and of this network and for the work that we all do each and every day. And as Allison mentioned, especially during the pandemic, through these challenging times, your exceptional dedication has not gone unnoticed. 
And as we look forward to the next many years, I remain excited to see even more innovation, more education, and more accomplishments across the field. So while Allison didn't have a glass of champagne, I'd ask you to join me as I offer up a toast to the network. Cheers to 50 years. Again, thank you and very much so, well done. And now I'd like to introduce Alexandra Bauman, Director of the Nutrition and Wellness Division at the Iowa Department of Aging and Director of our ACL funded Nutrition and Aging Resource Center. Alex? Thank you so much, Edwin. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alex Bauman, and I've been a part of the Aging Network as a state unit on aging dietitian for the past three and a half years. Before my time with the Aging Network, I worked as a dietitian for nursing homes. The transition from nursing homes to the Aging Network was extremely eye-opening, and I'm just constantly amazed by the wonderful people working within the network. As mentioned, I'm now the director of the Nutrition and Aging Resource Center, a partnership with ACL and the Iowa Department on Aging. The Nutrition and Aging Resource Center serves to build the capacity of Older Americans Act funded senior nutrition programs to provide high quality person-centered services. The Resource Center also works hand in hand with ACL to support grantees and other stakeholders and to identify opportunities to enhance program sustainability and resiliency. If you haven't already, we encourage you to visit acl.gov slash senior dash nutrition for the latest information and resources on nutrition in older adults. Today, I'm pleased to introduce a special video created in honor of the Senior Nutrition Program. Our collaboration team of ACL and Resource Center staff are proud of this video that features people from across the country including national partners, local providers, and participants. Y'all share their thoughts on the program and its impact on the lives of older adults. The Senior Nutrition Program team, both at ACL and here at the Resource Center, will continue to share the voices of our network members in the future, and we hope you will do the same. The power of story is one we can all harness. On behalf of the Nutrition and Aging Resource Center, we look forward to serving the network and hearing about program impact firsthand over the next many years. And with that, on to the video. In January of 1994, I got a chance to tour the kitchen here. In fact, the other location. And I was stunned that they are doing such a nice thing for the community. You know, I knew I couldn't cook and, uh, you know, be a good way to get a nutritional meal. So. I've started eating food that I did, I thought I didn't like, but uh, because of the way that, that it's fixed and seasoned and everything, I now eat glazed carrots and I eat broccoli sprouts that I used to didn't eat. The healthy meal is so important because the meals that come out of the Older Americans Act Nutrition Program are specifically designed to meet the, uh, the health needs, the nutritional needs of a senior. It is almost uh, without saying that there's a connection between nutrition and health that we should be focused on and supporting as much as we can. And the Older Americans Act really leads that effort. So many older adults uh, don't get access to the highest quality nutrition. Uh, for any number of reasons. So this provides an opportunity to, to give them that access. And, and, and food um, and, and sharing a meal with somebody has always been, for as long in human history, has always been a key aspect to connection.
as important as a nutritious meal that's tasty and that people are willing to eat is also knowing that you're going to see someone in a given day that power of the human connection because so many seniors are also isolated and lonely and not only does malnutrition contribute to adverse health effects but so does depression and loneliness it's a lot of fun because we get to see people we have we have met over the years and uh when we miss somebody, we always ask, is they all right? Or, you know, what's going on? So you make friends, you make friends. And then when you don't see them, you ask about them. The health and well-being and the relationship of socialization to that and the relationship of good education and knowledge about what to eat um, and, you know, adding the idea of trying to prevent malnutrition, which is a growing concern that we have about with older adults. I think all are complements to the original purpose of the Older Americans Act, but they've grown more important as the years have gone by. And so from a, a community uh, aspect, we see healthier and happier communities, uh, communities that allow people to remain integrated with all age groups in the homes that they want to live in. Um, and that supports choice and autonomy, things that our community and the United States are all about. I think the program is vital to the health of our clients, family, neighbors, and community. Um, not only to provide food, but to eliminate social isolation. It's a great uh, program and they, um, they should definitely try it. I mean, it's just a fun time. It, it gets us out of the house and, and we feel a part of something. We be, feel like we still belong. We're still in Portland, even at our age. With the meal program, and as in particular socialization, I believe that they made their life longer. For some people, it's a life-saving program. Um, for some people, it's a socialization program, seeing that driver walk up to their um, door or in a congregate meal site, sitting with their friend and having a meal. And I think the value of a program like this is something you can't actually put a value on. I think it's indisposable. Hello, my name is Rhonda Schwartz, and I am a regional administrator for ACL. We hope you enjoyed the video and hearing from members of our network about the value of the Senior Nutrition Program. Now, in order to further celebrate this critical work, ACL reached out to the network earlier this year and asked you to take a moment to reflect on your collective work and to highlight exemplary colleagues by nominating them for today's awards program. Today's awardees are members of the network, nominated by the network, for their outstanding contributions to the Senior Nutrition Program. We are so excited to recognize these amazing individuals. Now let's get started. Our first award today is the State Unit on Aging Champion Award. State Units on Aging, or SUAs, are designated agencies that are responsible for overseeing the development and administration of statewide plans that advocate for and provide assistance to older adults. SUAs can be found in each of the 50 states and six US territories. Our State Unit on Aging Champion Award recognizes the significant contributions of an individual at a State Unit on Aging. And the winner is Benet Jackson. Benet is the Older Adult Nutrition Program Manager at the Division of Aging and Adult Services for the Mississippi State Unit on Aging in Jackson. Benet is being recognized with this award today for her role as a key contributor and champion for the Mississippi Older Adult Nutrition Program. Through her tireless efforts, she is making a difference in the lives of older adults in Mississippi. 
Binet's dedication and passion for helping her community are exemplified in the way she continually strives to improve and increase resources provided through the Older Adult Nutrition Program in her state. This includes spearheading innovative ways for the nutrition program to meet needs and fill gaps in services where they exist. One such initiative is the aging annual shelf-stable food drive at the Mississippi Department of Human Services, which has become bigger and better with each passing year, collecting twice as much food in 2021 as in 2020. Benet's colleagues commend her positive attitude and the value she places on people and relationships and share that she hardly meets a stranger. She creates trusting partnerships with her colleagues and community partners in order to expand the capacity of the Senior Nutrition Program in Mississippi, where resources are often limited. In addition, Benet strives to, up, strives to uplift her team by sending words of encouragement to her nutrition coordinator team almost daily, a simple act that the staff says helps to motivate them and keep them going. ACL is proud to present Benet with the SUA Champion Award. Let's give Benet a round of applause in the chat. Okay. And now our next awards for, are for Area Agency on Aging Champion. Area Agencies on Aging, also known as AAAs, coordinate and provide services at the regional and local level to help older adults remain healthy and independent in their communities. Today, we recognize two champions from our network for their outstanding contributions at state-designated area agencies on aging. Our first AAA Champion Award goes to Nikki Dean. Nikki is the Nutrition Program Coordinator for Piedmont Senior Resources Area Agency on Aging in Farmville, Virginia. Since she came to the agency in 2018, Nikki has been integral in growing and expanding the senior nutrition program. Nikki has raised more than $1,000 worth of donations for the program by participating in the Subaru Share the Love Santa for Seniors event in which staff and volunteers pack more than 700 bags of necessities for homebound older adults. She also has helped organize food and emergency supply delivery during multiple ice and snowstorms to ensure clients received their meals. Furthermore, she has embraced the intent of the Older Americans Act by enhancing socialization and improving health and well being for older adults in her community. Nikki's colleagues credit her work as leading to Piedmont Senior Resources becoming one of the first AAAs in Virginia to adopt the new bingo size and falls prevention workshops and for the agency's success in meeting and exceeding goals for their programming. During the pandemic, Nikki led the way in reimagining and implementing virtual activities for older adults at home including crafts, Tai Chi exercises, falls prevention courses, educational speakers, and more. Nikki also initiated and successfully carried out a tablet lending program to ensure that clients without internet capabilities had the opportunity to engage in virtual programs. Nikki is known for her contagious enthusiasm and for approaching new challenges with zeal. That's why it is today with great pleasure that ACL presents Nikki with this award. Our next AAA Champion Award goes to Corin McCoy. Corin serves as the manager of Jerry Larson Food Basket, the hub of the Health Trust's Meals on Wheels operation in Santa Clara County, California. Corin's first involvement with the Senior Nutrition Program was as a volunteer delivering meals for the Health Trust Program. In his current role, he oversees the Health Trust's home delivered meals operation. With his legendary sense of humor and roll up his sleeves attitude, 
Corin has led his team through challenging times, implementing innovative solutions to meet unprecedented community need. During the pandemic, Corin demonstrated leadership in providing innovative new approaches to meal delivery, resulting in a 300 to 500% increase in meal deliveries. Today, the Health Trust is still delivering about triple the number of meals it delivered pre-pandemic, thanks to Corin's long hours and dedication. The pandemic led to numerous challenges. Many volunteers were unable to help as they sheltered in place and social distancing limited the number of people who could gather in the program facilities. Despite this, Corin onboarded hundreds of new staff members and volunteers, launched new partnerships with private sector ventures, such as DoorDash and car, car dealerships, and secured new vehicles and storage units. In addition, he partnered with local vendors to develop and deploy Asian fusion and vegetarian meal options to meet client needs. Always willing to go above and beyond, Corin embraced an additional responsibility of providing a monthly free grocery distribution in one of the neighborhoods hardest hit by COVID-19. Corin and his team distribute free produce, milk, and eggs to residents with kindness and dignity one Wednesday a month. It is with great pleasure, pleasure that ACL presents Corin with this award. Now let's give our Area Agency on Aging champions, Nikki and Corin, a round of applause. Next up are the Local Service Provider Champion Awards. There are over 5,000 local service providers in our network. Providers include organizations like senior centers, congregate meal sites, and home-delivered meal providers that work directly with older adults to provide the services and support they need. Our winners today are being recognized for their commitment and contributions at a local service provider in their senior nutrition network. Our first awardee is Amy Mallett. Amy is the executive director at Hood River Valley Adult Center in Hood River, Oregon. She came to the Hood River Valley Adult Center in 2016 after working in the field of aging in Santa Barbara, California for 20 years. In her role, Amy has worked tirelessly to eradicate hunger among her community's most vulnerable seniors, help older adults age in place, and provide community approaches to education through her program. Some of her most notable achievements include opening a grab and go lunch program, implementing a food truck to bring culturally appropriate meals to Latinx elders in the Upper Valley, and providing daily hot meals to a local homeless shelter. Clients who participate in Amy's program receive special holiday meals and gifts. Amy's colleagues have called her the queen of fundraising. She has written many grants and overseen countless fundraising initiatives to improve programs and support her center. During the pandemic, she helped make physical improvements to the center to facilitate accessibility and ensure optimum health and safety for clients, volunteers, and staff. Amy does all of this by coordinating a huge group of dedicated volunteers and employees that work together as a cohesive group to bring services to the senior community, all overseen by Amy with love and dedication. It is with great pleasure that ACL presents Amy with this award. Now our next award for a local service provider champion goes to Mary Jo McKay. Mary Jo is the nutrition and wellness manager at the Aging Services Department in Hillsborough County, Florida, where she oversees the county's 15 congregate dining centers, seven senior centers, home delivered meals program, and volunteer program. For 26 years, Mary Jo has worked to transform the county's nutrition program and senior centers into the thriving, diverse, and well-rounded wellness centers they are today. A few examples from her colleagues. When Mary Jo noticed an increase in attendance at congregate meal sites located in senior centers, 
While other sites struggled, she worked with her team to reinvent the county's dining centers into mini senior centers to meet an increasingly diverse community, including Spanish speaking clients. She recruited bilingual staff and volunteers and required her new and existing team members to take cultural diversity trainings. Mary Jo also started member advisory groups to plan new activities and programs for each center. In addition to transforming the age old game of bingo, they introduced gardening clubs, billiards, cooking demonstrations, fitness classes, language classes, and countywide special events, such as Hispanic and Black heritage celebrations, singers prom, and wacky Olympics. And I have to admit, I am curious to understand what that involves. At the beginning of the pandemic, Mary Jo and her team quickly pivoted to parking lot bingo, outdoor movie cinema, and virtual activities. With grab and go meals and dinner meals prepared and delivered by local food trucks and restaurants, she helped to increase meal enrollment from 2,200 to 4,500 seniors at the height of the pandemic. For her hard work and dedication, ACL is proud to present Mary Jo with this award. Let's give our local service provider champions, Amy and Mary Jo, a round of applause. Finally, we turn to our Shining Star Award. As you know, the Senior Nutrition Program depends on the tireless work of our volunteers in communities across the country. Without our volunteers, we truly could not do the work that we do. To recognize this, the Shining Star Award is pre presented to a volunteer in our network who has gone above and beyond to serve their community through their work with the Senior Nutrition Program. Our Shining Star goes to Harris Seidel. Harris has been a volunteer for the Story County Senior Nutrition Program for Heartland Senior Services in Ames, Iowa, for 20 years. At 99 years old, he delivers meals five days a week, dropping off as many as 36 meals a day, and he has no plans to stop anytime soon. While this is already commendable, Harris faced new challenges in 2021 and was called upon to go above and beyond his role. Last year, Harris was making daily meal delivery to a client and found that the man had fallen in his home and was in need of medical help. Harris was able to let himself into the house and call 911, ensuring that the client got the help he needed despite being eight years his senior. For his valiant efforts, Harris received heartfelt thanks from the client, his family, and his community and was featured in the local Iowa papers in December of last year. ACL is thrilled to present this award to Harris. Please give him a round of applause. And now for our last award of the afternoon, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Judy Simon, ACL's National Nutritionist. Good afternoon, my name is Judy Simon and I'm ACL's National Nutritionist. Have you ever hoped to meet someone you've admired but never dreamed you'd not only meet them but have a chance to work directly with them? Well, that dream came true for me and because of that today, I have the great honor of presenting our next award, the Commitment to Excellence Award. This award recognizes incredible dedication by an individual to both the nut senior nutrition program and the older adults it serves across the country. We're delighted to present the award to a colleague who has over several decades devoted immeasurable energy and time supporting the National Senior Nutrition Program. That colleague is Jean Lloyd. As many of you know, Jean served as the National Nutritionist for the Administration on Aging for 25 years, helping to shape the program into what it is today. Before Jean came to the federal government, she had a variety of roles. The most prominent was her work at the Ohio Department of Aging. And what some may not know is that before she came to us, 
Here, there had not been an Older Americans Act national nutritionist for more than 10 years. So not only did Jean shape the program herself, itself, but she also reshaped the national nutritionist position that provides guidance and support to the Older Americans Act nutrition program going forward. In preparation for today, we asked Jean's friends and colleagues to share some words about her. As one told us, Jean exemplified a team spirit from the beginning of her tenure as national nutritionist. She provided tireless leadership and has been beloved mentor to countless numbers of nutrition program professionals across the network. Many also mentioned Jean's impressive, or should I say uncanny, detailed knowledge of the Older Americans Act and her willingness to share that deep understanding with others. Most of all, her colleagues lauded her dedication to bettering the senior nutrition program. For example, Jean was instrumental in guiding the national evaluation of senior nutrition programs, an annual national survey of Older Americans Act programs, which demonstrate through positive outcomes the value of the senior nutrition program on the lives of older adults. The past two years since I joined ACL have been a professional dream come true in many ways, and the opportunity to have Jean as a colleague tops the list. Jean has become a mentor to me, no matter how busy she may be working closely with ACL's Title VI grantees, she's always generous with her time, her caring attention, and her guidance. She wants others to succeed and praises good efforts while encouraging you to stretch a bit farther if she thinks you may, there may be more you could do to benefit others in the nutrition program or to better support the program itself. So today we celebrate these contributions and the many more Jean has made throughout her career to the senior nutrition program and to the wider aging network. We appreciate her continued dedication to sharing needed information with the network and providing guidance when circumstances change. Her contributions to dozens of ACL's early pandemic resources, for example, many of which will remain as essential materials for the network for years to come, cannot be underestimated. She supported the Office of Nutrition and Health Promotion Programs during those initial months in 2020 and mentored me with patience and humor as I was learning my role. She has also done tremendous work advancing partnerships between Title III nutrition programs and American Indians, Alaskan Natives, and Native Hawaiian Title VI grantees. I'm deeply indebted to Jean for her kindness and deep understanding of the senior nutrition program. As Jean moves into retirement, I personally wish her the very best, not only from myself, but from the entire aging network. I've made her promise to keep in touch because once you meet Jean, you know you have met an extraordinary person. It is with great pleasure that I present Jean Lloyd with the Commitment to Excellence Award. Thank you, Judy. Uh, Carrie Edwin, Acting Administrator and Assistant Secretary for Aging, Barkoff, and all the ACL staff and all my friends in the Aging Network who kept this a surprise. And it is a surprise. And although many people may think that I've been around since the beginning of the program in 1972, I have only worked for the program slightly under 40 years, just like Edwin. And so I want to commend the Aging Services Network, the state units on aging, the tribes, the area agencies on aging, local service providers, volunteers, advocates, who have shared their expertise with me and their commitment over the years to serving a population of older Americans who are increasing in numbers and an increasing proportion of the population and increasingly diverse and who are living longer, healthier, more functional, functionally fit lives in the community. And yet at the same time, we know that there are increasing numbers of older Americans who are more vulnerable. Those who are over the age of 80, who live alone, who are financially poorer, who are at risk for poor health, less functionally fit, 
and more, de in de more dependent, less food secure, isolated, depressed, and at risk for institutionalization. And the Aging Services Network cares for these older Americans across the continuum. The 50th anniversary of the Senior Nutrition Program is really a testament to their ability to be not only the cornerstone program of home and community-based services in a long-term service and support system, but also be innovative and responsive to changing health and social service system changes, changing methods of care, changing families, economies, technology, funding, and the experience and expectations of Americans of all ages. Thank you all for allowing me to be part of these historic dynamic changes. Since this event is celebrating five years of service, let me talk a little bit about the history. The Senior Nutrition Program goes back to reports in the late 1960s about hunger in America. The 1969 White House Conference on Food, Nutrition and Health and the Older Americans Act Amendments of 1969 that allowed model demonstration projects. One of those projects was a project that funded 24 individually different models of nutrition pro projects across the country. It also found, funded a report on learnings from those models, and it funded an independent evaluation of those projects. As a result of that model demonstration project in 1972, Congress amended the Older Americans Act with Title VII, and that was authorizing the nutrition program for the elderly. The first community-based service for older adults authorized by the Older Americans Act, because Congress found, and this is their words, that the research and development of nutrition projects demonstrated the effectiveness and the need for permanent nationwide projects to assist in meeting the nutritional and social needs of millions of persons age 60 and older. And then the next year, the Administration on Aging published the Green Guide. And this was a guide that detailed how state units on aging were to specifically replicate this project across the entire country. The legislation also emphasized that meals should meet what we now know as the dietary reference intakes, as well as meet the special needs of the health, religious, and ethnic needs of vulnerable older adults. The legislation originally emphasized a holistic approach of providing social and health promotion services to fight hunger, malnutrition, and isolation. But Congress only authorized the Congregate Nutrition Program. It wasn't until six years later in 1978 that it authorized the Home Delivered Program, as well as a new title, a Title VI Program for Services to American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians. These changes illustrate how the Senior Nutrition Program adapted to societal changes, and grassroots advocacy. Now, does that sound like it's old? Or is that new and familiar and modern, just like it is today? The original legislation emphasized that the lack of food, or what we now know as food insecurity, the possibility of malnutrition, which was then included in the 2020 amendments again, the essential social aspects of what we now call the social determinants of health, as well as serving an older, diverse population, all of those things that we do today. And while a lot has changed in the past 50 years, how we think about serving this population from maintaining health to decreasing hunger and social isolation to managing chronic conditions, these have always remained the goal of the Senior Nutrition Program. And I've been part of these changes, adaptations, and innovations. The Administration on Aging hired me in 1992 after I was a state nutritionist in Ohio. 
That was also the year that the dietary guidelines were added to the Older Americans Act, allowing for the first time science-based consumer information for older adults, as well as evidence-informed information for making policies at federal and state level. At the same time, there were a number of other changes. I served on the interdepartmental committees for the Dietary Guidelines for Americans and Dietary Reference Intakes and served on those committees to remind them what the kinds of things they did in those committees affected real practice and real people in the community. And also during the 90s, I was the project officer for a national nutrition evaluation, which was the first one that was done since the early 1970s. And I helped develop a new reporting system that included the determined checklist. And, gov and Congress passed the Government Performance and Results Act. And that required agencies to justify to Congress how their programs functioned and why they should get money in the first place. And this led to the development of the National Survey of Older Americans Act participants, which continues to be revised today to meet the changing needs of the population. I was part of the demonstration, research, and development of the survey. And the survey tells our story from the perspective of participants and how the senior nutrition program allows them to live at home in their communities. Then in 2006, the amendments brought back to the forefront the original purposes of the 19, 1972 Older Americans Act and the purposes of the nutrition program, addressing hunger, food insecurity, socialization, health, and well being. And the Administration for Community Living began another national evaluation of the nutrition program. I was involved in the research design and the protocols. But then I retired from AOA before it was finished. It took quite a number of years since it was an expensive process. But again, it indicated just like in 1972 that the nutrition program is effective, it is efficient, and it has positive effects on the nutritional intake, socialization, and health of older participants. There was also an evaluation of the Title VI program emphasizing the importance of the senior nutrition program to the native population. And I was on their advisory council as well. So most recently, the 2020 amendments added malnutrition back to the language of the Older Americans Act, just like it was back in 1972. And today, the Older Americans Act funding can be used for nutrition innovation grants. Before I retired, I worked on the justifications to Congress and the Office of Management and Budget to allow this change. These grants are both demonstrations and research, just like the original model demonstration grants that resulted in the Senior Nutrition Program, allowing for the testing of new delivery and practice and ensuring ongoing research to improve the program. And then COVID happened and older adults had difficulty in accessing adequate food. And it reinforced that food and adequate nutrition was essential for life. And older adults had decreased social interactions and reinforced that social interaction is essential for remaining physically, emotionally, and cognitively healthy. And Congress responded with additional funding. And the Aging Services Network rose to the challenge and served increasing number of older adults who were now at risk. And the COVID-19 pandemic allowed nutrition services to develop new flexible service practices. And it is not over. There will be increasing challenges, increasing numbers of older adults who like me might need services in the future and there will be continued unmet need. And the good news, the Senior Nutrition Program is stronger than ever. It has been independently, positively evaluated. It has met an incredible challenge during COVID. 
and it has strong, dedicated advocates. I will never forget that we make a difference in individual older lives and the ability of people to remain at home. I'm proud of my role in helping to make this happen. We should not forget that we can build on a successful history on stepping up to challenges, on taking the challenges as opportunities and never forgetting that the program is more than simply food or a meal. I'm thankful for being part of that effort. And thank you all for this honor and keep up your good work and advocacy for older adults throughout the country. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Again, we're so pleased to have the opportunity to present you with this well-deserved award. And now we'll move to the next segment of our event, which will focus on innovation. And more specifically, how we can all foster innovation while over overcoming common obstacles. To lead us in this important conversation, it is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Wilson-Gold and Jeff Klein. Thank you, Judy. As Judy mentioned, I'm Kathy Wilson-Gold and I am a nutrition consultant for the Office of Nutrition and Health Promotion Programs. I am so excited to introduce our next guest on the program, Jeff Klein. But first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. Jeff is the president and CEO of Nevada Senior Services, an aging and disability resource center serving the majority of Southern Nevada's 2 million residents. Jeff's contributions to the aging network are extensive, and he's been recognized nationally for his innovative strategies. The title of his presentation is Disruptive Innovation in Aging. Jeff is going to lead the discussion today as we think about innovation, as we think about challenges and overcoming obstacles. Jeff, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, first, the tip of the hat to all of you on this milestone celebration for sharing this important journey together, because uh, nothing can happen unless we do things together. I think you'll agree that we are living in one of the most interesting times. I can't remember myself a time in which our history, our activities, our challenges were so full and every day brought us uh, a, a new challenge. And let me also say new anxieties. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, just maybe three years that we were meeting together and talking about the evolution of congregate meal programs, of generational shift, of the impact of the baby boomers, that baby boomers wanted services delivered perhaps differently than the World War II greatest generation and Korean War generation that we knew so well. And so there was a shift in the culture of change, how people would accept and receive services. And while we knew congregate meal programs were delivering incredible results, we had great concerns about whether or not we would be able to sustain them with the change in population. Also with the shift in generations was the shift in the diversity of our population. And finally, uh, a rising danger of food insecurity among adults as a result of chronic rates of, of diseases, of chronic uh, diseases. And uh, that has become a challenge in, in our population. Uh, as we age, we have uh, more and more challenges to our health and to our uh, economic viability that create food insecurities. So there are fixed income dynamics in aging and uh, health dynamics in aging and population dynamics and generational and culture change. And then finally, uh, landing on this evolutionary conversation uh, that we started some three or four years ago came COVID-19. Kathy? Jeff, you talk about the generational culture change and baby boomer, boomers are part of that. 
We know that the birth year boundaries are often debated, but most agree that the oldest Gen X is about 57 years old. So in three years, Gen X is going to be eligible for the Senior Nutrition Program. How should the Aging Network be thinking about Gen X and possible changes that may be required for them to want to attend congregate programs? I think that's such an important factor to understand in the change uh, from evolution uh, into the wave crashing on our shores of uh, generational change. Clearly, we're in the midst of the baby boomer group, but that 57-year-old group is just three years away from what we set as a threshold of 60 for older Americans Act programs. So we are just on the cusp of a combined major generational shift. And when one combines that huge shift with the implications of COVID shattering our environment, shattering our programs, we recognize that uh, we are in an age of disruption. Disruption, which comes from the impact of COVID on every aspect of our institutional and personal environment. And it, it drives the fact that many well-established aging services and healthcare organizations have to recognize that disruption in terms of the impact of the services they provide. How many of us closed our doors? How many of us found new ways of serving people uh, during the lockdowns and during the many, many challenges of COVID, both uh, how do we reach people and how do we serve people? And so this need to shift both generationally, recognizing that people receive services differently and at a highly escalated pace has created a, a, a major disruptive factor in, uh, and ultimately will drive uh, much of the direction in which we need to go, Kathy. Thank you, Jeff. Great, great answer. So Jeff, you mentioned that mo many programs have shifted and made permanent changes as a result of COVID, but some are going back to pre-COVID. Um, this can be problematic for those seniors who can't return or are afraid to return to their senior nutrition program. For example, what about the seniors that are afraid to come back due to chronic health problems? Are they going to fall through the cracks? And how do we ensure that they get those nutritious meals and that socialization that's so important? Uh, first off, I'm reluctant to say it, but uh, I find myself saying it all too frequently that there is no forward to yesterday. Uh, our world has been inevitably changed, uh, both by COVID and by generational shift, and that the population that we serve has been changed. Their willingness to receive services, to return to services as they knew it, uh, is, is very much impacted by their concerns about COVID, but also by the generational factors that we talked about. So we have to rethink this whole thing. There's this topsy-turvy effect where everything has been stood on head. Uh, and it's complicated by the fact that our institutions operate differently under stress. So organizations that are large are well not, not really suited to rapid disruption. They tend to be slow to change. And maybe we are slow to change in an environment that requires really maximum flexibility. But large organizations have resources, often human and financial. They may fail to see that a different and innovative model is required. However, they need to harness on an expedited basis that change, and that just runs against the grain. Smaller organizations, on the other hand, are way more nimble at response. However, they frequently kind of lack the resources that are necessary to respond to sudden demanding disruptions. Those can be financial and personnel. Uh, it, they can be communal. So this shift combined with the shift in our population uh, creates a number of complications. Uh, we've all seen the fear factor type shows on television. Well, we live fear factors. So we have the fear of the things that are impacting our survival as agencies in the now. 
And then with all this disruption and change, how will we survive in the future, in the then? As leaders, we focus on performance in the now, today. And yet we very much have to look at how we pivot to performance in the then, the future. Jeff, large and small organizations can have trouble pivoting. You've mentioned this. Um, small changes, small changes can make a difference in the quality and can address disruption. Can you give us some examples of what this might look like and what the path to the future could be? Aha, uh -huh. and there's the key. You know, innovation sees change as an opportunity, not a threat. And resilience supplies the ability to envision the next evolution of change while we're in the midst of active disruption. Let me, let me give you an example of a, a pop-up that occurred here in Nevada during uh, the, the first week of COVID. Uh, one of our county commissioners, uh, uh, a brilliant and, and, and committed leader, woke up in the middle of the first week of lockdown and said to herself, huh, we're gonna have a major problem. Our restaurants are closing and we have huge numbers of people who relied on food programs that are gone. You know, all these congregate meal programs and senior centers are shuttered. What do we do? And she came up with the idea of trying to keep those kitchens open to create food that could be delivered to people. And she knew that that had to be locked into the community in a way that we could identify who required those meals and then create a massive effort to harness volunteers to get those meals to those people that our community agencies identified in partnership with fabulous restaurants committed to delivering scrumptious meals. And that became the beginning of delivering with dignity. It happened over a weekend on a Sunday afternoon when a number of us put our our heads together to uh, uh, heed Commissioner Kirkpatrick's call. And that program has now delivered over 600,000 meals since it started instantly uh, in response to COVID. So what do we learn from, from this? And where do we start? What does innovation uh, look like? Well, we innovate by starting with those we serve and working backwards. I think that delivering with dignity uh, initiative is just a great example of defining how we help people, how we identify them, and then how we respond to them. And then we look to the conditions for innovation, the environment in which innovation occurs. So first off is choice. We recognize that we need to meet people and communities where they want to be met. A second is the recognition that it is lifespan that is greater than health span. We will need to focus on those factors that as we age, drive our needs for community supports, including nutrition. We have an over uh, emphasis on medicalizing everything in aging. And I think we need to get off that track. Doesn't mean we can't work with healthcare providers and in, within a healthcare context, but not everything is medicalized. Not all problems have a healthcare root. We need to look at the problems of aging as lifespan and design our programs to meet our community. We have to look at culture and within the context of an aging culture and a diverse culture, how we respond rapidly and innovatively to the issues we have before us. And then of course, as we all learned during COVID technology, it's adapt, adopt and develop new tools. Uh, and, and to do it, uh, with a, a spirit of, of adventure, I think. Uh, the current environment, I think, dictates two rules. Everything is going to happen faster and anything that can be done will be done, if not by you, then by someone else. You know, values light our pathway forward. And as Alice said in Wonderland to the Cheshire Cat, when she reached a fork in the road, she said, you know, which way should I go? And a cat smiled up in the tree and said, that depends on where you want to end up. That's values. We either succeed fast or we fail fast if we wish to succeed. 
We need to try to do the impossible to anticipate the unexpected. And when the unexpected happens, double the efforts to make order from the disorder that it creates in your life, Kathy. Jeff, um, we hear a lot about obstacles. We hear a lot about why things won't work. Um, what do you recommend to those listenings, listening for overcoming roadblocks and making those changing changes and being proactive and not letting those obstacles bog them down? I, I, I think that's key. And uh, I think for innovation to function, uh, we need to recognize that it's a change that not only unlocks our values, but our call to action. Innovation is everybody's responsibility, not just kind of the R&D department. Uh, the commanding organizational principle for our future is innovation. And so we need to come to this uh, with a ruthless commitment to overcome uh, with innovation and with creativity, the barriers that are in front of us. You really brought up some excellent thoughts and actionable items today around innovation. I wish we had more time. I think we could talk all day about innovation, but unfortunately our time is coming to an end and we just have a moment left. Um, what would you like to leave these listeners with today? I think uh, I would remind myself and you that creativity is about ideas, but innovation is about making things happen. Innovation is an action process. And as I just mentioned, I think it takes a ruthless commitment to innovation, ruthless, not in a negative sense, but in a, in a vigorous sense of driving innovation forward and attacking things without being afraid. And that's hard, but take the fear factor, shove it to the side, let your energies abound and uh, make innovation a part of your agency's life. Thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you so much for that enlightening presentation. We appreciate, we appreciate your insights so much. And now, it's my honor to introduce someone I've had the pleasure of working with for almost three years now. I'm honored to present Carrie Lipperini, Director of, of the Office of Nutrition and Health Promotion Programs. Carrie will be providing final comments and she will close us out from today's special event. Carrie? Thank you, Kathy. As Kathy said, I'm Carrie Lipperini and I'm the Director of the Office of Nutrition and Health Promotion Programs at ACL. First, thank you everyone who's participating to our event today. In all our activities celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Senior Nutrition Program. I want to let you know that we at the federal level were so impressed with your level of commitment to the 50th anniversary. And I'm so excited to share that we had people from all 50 states, DC, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands sign up today to attend the celebration. And the level of love and commitment were felt so strong throughout the entire month with all the activities, the photos you sent in, and the social media feeds. It was so wonderful to see all this national presence. And well, personally, I wanna give a shout out to one of the love letters sent in from my hometown of Pittston, Pennsylvania, where so many of my family and friends still reside today. So now I'd like to give you a little bit of background about me. Prior to coming to ACL five years ago, I was at a local area agency in Calvert County, Maryland. I was overseeing their local nutrition programs. I wanted to, we wanted to end the 50th anniversary celebration today with a tribute to the network, recognizing all your hard work and innovation over decades, and also with some inspiration for the future. And as we started to think about who could speak, we thought it had to be someone who understood our complex network, who generally appreciates the work, and someone who fit the budget. And ta-da, 
here I am. So now um, I want to talk to you about something I think you can relate to. From, as coming from a senior center environment, I've played a lot of roles from kitchen cook to custodian to senior entertainer to trip guide and everything in between. However, motivational speaker was never something I played, but I'm honored to have that opportunity to do just that. Maybe it's worth taking a moment to tell you how I got here. I will tell you about when I first interviewed for my position here at ACL. During the interview, Edwin Walker, who you heard from earlier, asked me to tell him what I did that was innovative in Calvert County. And I clammed up. I had flashbacks of sitting on my couch with a bag of potato chips in my hand and watching infomercials for that innovation, for that life-changing new product, thinking, oh, if only I was so ingenious enough, brave enough, or if I had the startup capital to try something like that. But to my relief, Edwin asked it a different way. He said, what did you do that was creative? I immediately jumped up, oh, creative. I looked at him and I smiled. I said, I don't call those things innovation. I call them survival. And I listed all the things that were creative, all the innovation, but most accurately, the things that were necessary to keep our program afloat. See, like you, I had passion for the work that I was doing and feeding the seniors was the number one priority. One motto that I always live by is a chief on their feet that is worth 10 in their seat. And I made daily rounds to our centers. Often older adults would ask me to have lunch with them. So I worked really hard to ensure that not only the quantity of food was there so that we were serving and had enough to serve, but also that the quality was there too. If that didn't taste good, I'd say if they didn't, if, if I wouldn't eat it, then they shouldn't eat it either. Now, one exception to that was the liver and onions. They loved it and well, kind of just trusted them on that one. I bring this up to you today because I know that you all understand. Each and every one of us is passionate about what we do. I know that and anyone who's worked in our network for a day sees it firsthand. And I believe that's been true since 1972. And that passion has been put to the test during COVID-19 pandemic. As communities and face space centers and restaurants and schools and gyms all shut down across the country and people sheltered in place, you all kept it going. You never stopped serving. When other programs and services stopped, you pivoted and you kept going. You didn't waver. In fact, you were calling me, asking me things like, how could we expand our efforts to help others that we normally didn't reach? And each and every one of you stepped up. You stepped out of your comfort zone. You established new partnerships. You found new ways to fix problems, even worked on addressing things that hadn't happened yet, but you knew that they would be coming soon. You were true heroes, and dare I say, innovators. This was critical, as brave efforts led the way for others in your communities to follow, which was no surprise to me. I was glad to see your work was being recognized and that your innovations commended more than ever before. People in the communities thanked you, partners reached out to you, and we received unprecedented funding to increase the support. But I want to be clear. I truly believe that the innovation has always been there. It was always possible. The difficult times forced it out of us, just like Nike said in the 80s, to just do it. Some of my early recollections of the COVID time include a call from the then regional administrator on the West Coast. COVID was moving fast and she was asking for guidance that ACL had. In the same breath, she was telling me about what the network was doing already. They were partnering with school buses to transport and deliver meals door to door, serving grab and goes to continue providing foods to clients while keeping them safe. Now again, coming from the network, 
This was no surprise to me. I knew it and I still believe that the answers can always be found with the local and state agencies. In fact, this was recognized by those who put the Older Americans Act into place. Local agencies administer the program for a reason, because innovation starts at the grassroots levels. So let's go back to the pandemic. After that call, it was clear that our role at ACL was to capture what we were seeing on the ground from all of you and to spread the word. So we began reaching out to our innovation grantees, asking them to share their ideas. And guess what happened? A pile of stories, pile of examples came across from the nation, flooding my inbox. And using these examples, our team at ACL was able to develop success stories, tip sheets, webinars, presentations, and more to share with the rest of the network. And again, innovation starts at the local and state levels. Okay, now I'm gonna get to the part of the speech where I'm supposed to be motivational. So here goes. This momentum needs to continue, whether you call it innovation, creativity, or just plain survival. The power was in each and every one of you. We've seen it again and again. Continue to tackle problems head on, find solutions, share your successes and learn from the successes of others. Most importantly, continue to be an inspiration to those around you. During COVID, we've seen the good, we've seen some bad, and we've seen everything in between. And let's be honest, we faced our own struggles during this time. This will not be the last great challenge that we face, whether it's volunteer shortages or something else. There's always something for us to overcome. What has and will continue to inspire me is reading stories from our network, talking to all of you, getting to learn more about you, your hard work, your dedication, and your kindness. When I talk to you, you challenge me. You help me think about the things that I'm not seeing at this level. So please continue to do that and keep celebrating keep innovating and keep educating. You are today creating the programs of tomorrow and they will indeed be needed to serve the ever-growing communities of older adults who deserve to age in place with dignity and with the support from our programs like ours to provide healthy meals, social connections and activities that encourage well-being. And I don't know if I could ever put to words the appreciation that I have for our senior nutrition program and this network. So I will close by simply saying once again, cheers to 50 years and thank you. And with that, I'm going to close out our event with a final thank you to everyone for spending this time with us today. We look forward to you staying in touch and continuing to celebrate successes Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.